friends from the city of Salta. We are back with another video from Northern Argentina and this one's a busy one. In this episode we'll be showing you some of the colonial architecture that has earned this city the nickname of Salta the Beautiful. We'll try some delicious Northern Argentine food including my personal favorite, lentil stew. We'll learn about Argentina's colonial and revolutionary history at the Cabildo. We'll visit beautiful plazas lined with palm trees and step inside cathedrals that are works of art. We'll admire the views from atop Cerro San Bernardo and we'll also pick up a rental car because we need some wheels if we're going to road trip the north properly. Good morning, good morning guys, and welcome to Salta, Salta la Linda, Salta the Beautiful. We have arrived here in the city. Today is our first full day here, so the plan is to just explore the downtown core. They have a lot of colonial buildings, churches, basilicas, museums. It's all colonial, you know, this dates back to the, uh, to the days of the Spanish uh, colonizers, you know, and the architecture is just Beautiful. So yeah, we're gonna go visit a couple of museums. That's the plan today, to visit the core of the city. Sounds so good. So let's go discovering a little bit, okay? Let's do it. First up, we visited the Cabildo, which is a colonial building that today houses the History Museum of the North. It's located on the south end of the main square and it's easy to spot with its white arches. This is a good place to learn about Argentina's colonial and revolutionary past. not a bathtub. <laughs> Given the fact that we drink a lot of wine, we wanted to show you this and explain a little bit to you how the wine was made in the old, old days. This is a leather uh, kind of uh, tub, okay, with a wooden frame. The grapes were put into here and someone barefoot would come in and start crushing the grapes with the, with the feet. That's why it's called vino patero. Patero in, in slang, in, in Spanish, la pata is, is, your, is, is your foot. So pata it's like foot patero. wine. You're drinking foot wine. Foot wine. <laughs> so, wine. With the scent and everything. Yeah, you have to wash your feet really well. well one would hope that someone did yeah, that. Sometimes maybe a little piece of a toenail or something may yeah. you know, go in there and it gave a, a little there bit of There you go, you got a bit of a kick. You uh, know? Yeah, a flavor, you know, like a, but this was the way how the uh, wines were made in the old days, right? Now time for a little history lesson from my dad, Daniel. Here we are at the Cabildo, who was the main building uh, in the day, you know, like the day of the uh, colony. And this, this area here in Salta, a little bit of history, when Argentina uh, declared independence and they tried to break uh, uh, ties with Spain, this is the, the places where they tried to, to do it. Spain was uh, very strong in this area where, that was called the Alto Peru, which is today's uh, Bolivia. So the first attempts to beat the Spanish armies were made through northern Argentina going into Alto Peru or Bolivia. But the strength of the Spaniards in this area was so strong that it was almost impossible. They were advancing and fighting and capturing maybe one small location and then sometime after the Spaniards would uh, counter-attack and they will lose it and it was pushing and back and pushing and back and fighting and, and, and dying, you know. So when this route proved uh, impossible, that's when San Martin, the, the great liberator, decided to go across the Andes with his army and first uh, liberate Chile and then by sea they went all the way on to uh, liberate uh, Peru. At one point, the Spaniards were pushing south and they were so strong in the province of Jujuy, the next province north of here, that it was decided, it was called the Big uh, Jujuy Exodus. So they decided to leave nothing behind for the Spaniards and Jujuy was totally uh, erased. Like anything that could be carried away was carried away and the rest was burned burned to, you know, charred uh, land. You know, this country, uh, this area of the world 
we don't have Hollywood here, so the history is not very well known through the world, maybe, but if you really like the, the, this type of uh, history about uh, liberation and independence, and you can find books and read about uh, what happened in this area, it, uh, you'll be surprised, you know. Sometimes I think I'm standing here in the Cabildo in Salta, and I wonder, you know, how many people in those days must have been here in the same spot talking to the, uh, to the people and encouraging them to keep on fighting and keep on with the struggle. And uh, it's, it's pure history here, you know. So yeah. that's the part that I like when I come to these places, you know, to, you know, kind of... It's like uh, you're stepping back in time. Take a, a step back in time and, and, and position yourself in those days, but in modern times, like here, you know. What must have happened from this balcony you know, like 200 years ago, right? And in between all of that, we did a bit of shopping. My dad was in search of the perfect barbecue knife. Estos son acero inoxidable. Acero inoxidable. El árbol sí. se llama así. Es un árbol así gordo uh -huh. y de ahí sacan la madera. Sí. Oh. Which one you like the best? Ese está lindo. Buen tamaño. The bigger the better, Para right? Para cortar, para hacer asado. time for food. We grabbed lunch in the center of town at a restaurant called Doña Salta, which specializes in authentic northern cuisine. It is lunchtime. Today we're eating at a place called Doña Salta. They specialize in regional northern food, so that's exactly what we've ordered. I've got to tell you, it's a long wait to be seated and a long wait for the food to come out, but I hope it'll be good. The empanadas are now here. Yeah. One thing though, you're gonna be sure that it's fresh, yeah. fresh. because it's, the place is packed. Yeah. yeah, so the food has arrived. I'm gonna let my dad start first. I'm hitting the empanada, the cheese empanada. Very good. They're small, but excellent. And then I have the humita. I have another empanada beef, and we have a salad. And you have? And we have fries too. We yeah. have yeah. fries. Those came with Sam's steak. I'm having a lentil stew with bacon. Wow. It is so good, guys. What does it taste like? Yeah. It's just like hearty and salty. Ooh, there's sausage in here too. Spicy red sausage. It's the kind of dish you'd want to have on a cold day. <laughs> but I like which lentils it, which, so much. Which it isn't. By it isn't, the way. but I like lentils so much that I'm eating it today. Well, in the heat. Amazing. Great food here and it's worth the wait, I'd say, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, how is that steak? Oh man, it looks so good. Bife de chorizo, one of the best cuts in Argentina. Oh, a lot of people think that you can only get a good steak in Buenos Aires, but Salta has a really underrated Parisia scene here. I've been here before. I've had some of the best steak in the whole country, right in this city. We also got dessert in the form of this multi-layered cake with sticky meringue, dulce de leche, and chopped walnuts. It was just as good as it looks. Then, just across the street from the restaurant, we visited the Basilica and Convent of San Francisco. The structure you see today was rebuilt in 1759 after a fire destroyed the original building. Today, visitors can climb the Belfry, which is the tallest in the Americas, join a guided tour to gain access to the cloisters, or visit the Basilica independently.
<laughs> it has been a few hours. We're back yeah. in the apartment. Dark right out. now, we are eating our dinner. We're having a little picada. But we wanted to talk about this afternoon a bit. First up, I don't think we told you the price for lunch. Lunch was just over 2,000 pesos, which right now at current exchange rate is about 35 US dollars. Yep. And it was a lot of food. Probably yeah. more food than we needed. Yeah. Can so we that's agree? why tonight <laughs> we're having a light supper. Picnic, an indoor picnic. Yeah, a picada. But yeah, we would highly recommend that restaurant if you're in Salta. It's called Doña Salta. Gotta go there early because it's very popular and they specialize in regional foods. Yeah. So then after that, we visited an attraction right across the street from the restaurant. The Church of San Francisco, yeah. St. Francis. Francis. It's beautiful outside uh -huh. and inside. It's I amazing. would say that's probably the most impressive church in the whole city. And yeah. you can take guided tours and you can also go up the bell tower. We just visited the interior quickly on our own. So anyways, yeah, we got a picada. I got a beer, a Salta, Salta Negra beer, which is a water. stout. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just going to have a little snack. And tomorrow, uh, we're picking up a car. I don't think we're going to take it anywhere. I think we're going to spend another day in Salta. There's more stuff to do here. But uh, the road trip part of the north starts very soon. It's coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Well, good morning, everyone. It is day two here in Salta. Today the plan is to also spend some time exploring the city on foot. We found a nearby square, this is yeah. very nice. Very nice, beautiful construction again, very colonial. A lot of uh, trees that uh, are blooming. Mm -hmm. It seems like uh, in this city everything blooms, you know, even the biggest trees uh, you see, they have flowers. Beautiful walking weather. It's, it's oh, beautiful yeah. walking weather, it's not uh, scorching hot. We should also mention that we're picking up a car soon. Yes. And we're gonna show, we'll show that whole process. We're gonna be uh, basically taking a cab to the airport, yeah. renting a car, which we're gonna have for over a week. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna allow us to do a lot of uh, really cool things further north than Salta. That morning we visited the Cathedral of Salta, which sits on the north end of the main square. It's hard to miss with its pastel pink and cream colored facade. Also, this particular structure had to be rebuilt in 1856 after an earthquake destroyed the former building. We had a nice visit and then it was time to go pick up the rental car. Update! Update! We are back in the apartment. We had a successful mission picking up the rental vehicle. But oh my, driving in Salta, Ooh, it'll shake your nerves. I wasn't even driving. I was the passenger. I was the navigator with my GPS, like turn here, go there. Oh. Yeah, and the, the thing is, there's so many intersections <laughs> that don't have stoplights. And no. so it's just, you're supposed to, the vehicles you on the right. The right, the people yes. on the right go first. But like sometimes yeah. people just keep going yeah. and they don't stop and there's no stop signs. Yeah. It's. It's yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna try to avoid driving in the city. I think once we're yeah. on the highway doing our sightseeing missions, it's gonna be totally fine. Yeah, that's the only reason we wanted the car, to yeah. do day trips and then to travel up to Hujuy. And it's fine once you're on the highway, but I would not recommend getting a car for the yeah. city. Just do that on foot. So something we should mention is that we were basically requiring an automatic and nobody really drives automatics in Argentina. Everyone does and so we are paying either triple or quadruple the price. Seriously. It's a hundred bucks a day. It's very expensive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ouch. But um, that's something really to keep in mind if you're yeah. coming to Argentina. Consider uh, learning practicing. to drive. Practicing. That's the thing because yeah. we all know how to drive manual, yeah. but we are so rusty because that's not what yeah. we use back at home. And like with this traffic, you don't want to be stalling. No. So we got automatics, and yeah, we paid through the roof. Yeah, we paid through the roof for this one. Um, the la the last rental was ha wasn't as expensive, no, but this one is. No. And before we went and rented the car, we visited. Uh, the the main cathedral oh yes yeah. yes we did we popped in there it beautiful was very inside. nice very very ornate very, very gold yeah very elaborate yeah. also a lot of people visiting well i shouldn't say visiting like in the sense that we were i mean a lot of people praying. a lot of people coming yeah. in to uh, yeah 
want yeah, to pray. Yeah, like a lot of people using the church, yes. not just snapping photos of the church. So yeah, that was interesting exactly. to see. And yeah, the altar was spectacular. I wonder if they're trying to pay homage to the Inca culture with the sun, you know, that yeah. golden sun, Inti. And now we are hungry. <laughs> it is hungry. time for lunch. It's like two in the afternoon. So we're going to go find a restaurant. Yeah. And yeah, we just needed to come back to the apartment, park the car and like relax. Yeah. Shake off the nerves. Shake off the nerves. We, we, we survived <gasps> day one. We survived. <laughs> <laughs> and later on, I think we're going to go up that mountain. And then it was time for another lunch in the city. This time around, we opted for steaks and pasta. We've arrived at the steakhouse. Cheers. 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 We got some house red wine here. Yeah, this one comes in uh, bulk, no bottle. I like it. I think it's good. Yeah, it's for good. house wine, table wine. Mm. Yeah, nothing wrong with this one. No, it's going to be our table companion. Yeah, and we're gonna liquidate him <laughs> by the end of the meal. For sure. Tell us. The meat what has arrived. Vacío al horno. Look at that. Boop. It's ready to jump off the plate. <laughs> it wants to get into my... It wants to get in the belly. In yeah. the belly. And it goes. It's ready. And she has the uh, anilletti. It's a pasta stuffed with ricotta, ham, walnuts, and it has a cream sauce. It's very tasty. Yum, yum. Mangia bellezza, mangia bene! <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the godfather over here. Huh? Guarda questa qua, mi piace sai questa qua. And you got the... You got the matambre. Yeah, over here. Yeah, with a little bit of wine. Yeah. That's all we need today, you know, but... This is the meal of the day. This is the meal of the day. All right, so Sam is having a meat pizza. Best way yes. to describe it. Oh, whoops. Dude. <laughs> oh, that was, close, that was right? a close call. And they've given me a, a real knife. Look at, look at this knife compared to the normal table knife. A big boy That's knife. a big boy knife. Don't cut yourself. <laughs> Operate with care. So yeah, we were saying this is a, a thin slice of meat on top of that cheese and tomato. This actually reminds me a bit of how you have a milanese sometimes here oh, in Oh yeah, country. the Napolitana. The Napolitana style, yeah. But this is in veal, it's a cut of beef. Thin beef. Oh man. Mmm, that's delicious. I'm really happy with that. It's gonna be a really good lunch. The perfect size, I'll definitely be full, but maybe have a little room for dessert too. Oh, you know, limoncello. Limoncello. Oh, wow. gracias. This is a sweet made with a sweet potato. A sweet potato, and the other one is cream cheese. You eat it together, right? And you got the sweetness and the other one that is the saltiness, right? It, it's a beautiful combination. But who's gonna have all this? Let me try it. <laughs> mm. We all know he is. He is. Mmm, beautiful uh, souvenir from when I was a child and was living in this country. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish all this, Audrey, half and half. You need, we need your help. <laughs> what the heck? Definitely. I'm not going to leave it behind. No way. <laughs> no way. I'm going for it. We're going for it. Oh, we, all have, we have limoncello. And they brought us Salud. limoncello. Cheers. Homemade. Homemade. That afternoon, we visited Cerro San Bernardo, which is a hill overlooking the city of Salta. You get some really nice views from here, plus you can see how spread out the city really is. There are a few different ways to reach the top. You can either take the cable car, grab a taxi, or hike up. The latter option involves climbing 1,070 steps, so you've been warned. What is oh. happening? We're back. So what, what happened was basically we, we finished our meal and then complimentary limoncellos, which were like uh, the aperitivo of the, at the end of the meal. The Three of them. 
I ended up drinking most of them, let me yes, say. Yes, you she did. She had the three of them. I, I, she I, had I, the three. I, I had the three of them and, and my, my, I have a, uh, my head is spinning, as you might imagine. <laughs> it's just the time. It's just the time. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so then after that lunch, yeah. we got in a cab and rode the taxi up to Cerro. San Bernardo. Oh, we went all the way up there. We had a very nice uh, taxi driver. Yeah. We, he waited for us all the way up there and he brought us back down. Oh my gosh, like Salta, you really get a perspective of Salta from up there. Yeah, you nice see, city. You see the downtown obviously, but you also see how much the city sprawls. For our last day in Salta, we decided to make use of the rental car and go on a little day trip. The town of Chicuana, located about one hour south of Salta, caught our attention, so we headed out to the countryside. Well, good morning everyone, and welcome to the town of Chicuana, here in the province of Salta. Today we decided to do an easier day trip, a closer day trip. We only drove one hour south of Salta capital. And we've arrived in this beautiful little town. Small, sleepy town. Sleepy colonial town. Yeah, we're in the middle and the square. Yeah. You know, all these towns here, they have a, a square, huh? Mm -hmm. That's the center. And uh, beautiful trees, a uh, lot of colonial houses, and a lot yeah. of them are made out of adobe. Mm -hmm. That's the mud, you know? There is a dog there, there laying on the grass under the bench. Uh, typical, a typical. You cannot miss. You know, it's always a dog or two in these parks uh, sleeping under the beautiful uh, sunshine. And they're very uh, friendly, you know? Oh yeah, they yeah. love pets. They come to you and if you yeah. can throw them uh, something to eat, even better, you know? But yeah. uh, they all come to, to, to greet people. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's one of those uh, places that uh, it seems time stood still here, you know? Mm. Yeah, it feels very peaceful. We're at the foot of the mountains, lots of greenery. Yeah. So I think we're just gonna walk around and get you see to know if we this find. Uh, I'm trying to find uh, one of those uh, gaucho hats. Oh, yeah. The Salta gauchos. They have a particular, particular kind of uh, hat they use, and I'm trying to find one. So when I barbecue up north in Canada, I can wear it. You know, we don't know where to get it. People are walking around, you know, wearing them, but yeah. uh, we have to find a place where they sell we'll them. We'll try to find that. I want to yeah. ask somebody. Yeah. They'll tell you right away, you know. Yeah, go here, go there. Ahí pueden tener artesanías. Sí. Ok, vamos a dar una vuelta entonces. Después si yo lo de gaucho venden en carril. ¿En carril? Sí, ahí a la entrada de aquí de Chicuana ahí el carril. Sí. Ahí la esquinita. Sí. Hay un hotel, no sé qué, al lado venden todo de gaucho. Todo tipo de esas cosas. Sí. Me voy a probar really el fun. sombrero, señora. Bueno. Ah. Oh. ¿Cómo va? <risa> ¿Me lo llevo a Canadá? Para hacer asado por allá. Huh? What's that? What do you say? They don't have one that has a tag. They don't have a tag to take them here. I don't know how to take them here. I don't know where they left it. But this is part of it. Ah, it's part of it? Yes. The hat goes solo? Well, we've been in the town maybe five minutes and my dad already found what he was looking for. There you go. Now I'm covered. I'm protected. We forgot the sunscreen today. So I, I don't want to have a, a tomato for a nose after at the end of the day. <laughs> Plus so. you want to look stylish. Yeah. It's yeah. not just about and, the tomato and on, on the on top nose. of that now, when we barbecue in Canada, Argentinian style, yeah. I can wear my uh, salta hat. What do you think? Oh, that's perfect. All I need now is the lasso. <laughs> okay.
Well, we just had an unsuccessful attempt at visiting a local attraction. It's called Quebrada de Tilian, and it's kind of like a canyon with a waterfall and a stream. It looks really nice in photos, but as it turns out, it's on private property, and right now they're not giving visitors access. Like, there's signs saying it's closed until further notice, so that's disappointing. That was it. We drove in a dirt road, on a dirt road, and... Uh... Not that long, but uh, sadly the place is uh, locked up. Yeah. So we couldn't access. Maybe it's just the time of year, like maybe it's low season or dry season and there's no water. Could be. Um, I also read on, on like Google Maps in the review section that they tend to charge you 50 pesos per person, which is less than a dollar. It's maybe like 75, 80 cents. Yeah, to visit. Uh, to visit. So yeah, if you find yourself in this area, you're probably going to have to drive out here and, and find out if it's open or not, but it's not too far outside of town. It's a rural uh, area, you know? Yeah, like, lots I mean, of farms. All farmland and you see a lot of uh, sheep. goats and sheep and uh, horses and you have the guys working on the fields with the tractors yeah. and they are planting. So yeah, it's a nice ride. I was thinking that we made a mistake of not buying some bread and cheese and salami and having a like a picnic, you know? Yeah, a picnic in the countryside. That yeah, would have been nice. That would have been beautiful. So it is lunch time and we've just ordered a little appetizer to share. This is called salpicón de pollo. And if you ask me, it's kind of like a cold salad with chicken breast. It's simple, but it's nice to be getting some and, vegetables. Uh, there's a bit of a limited menu here, so mm -hmm. we're just having milanese. They didn't have the yeah. regional dishes available today. Mm -mm. And I'll have an empanada coming, so mm -hmm. yeah, food will be here in a bit. If all three plates look the same, that's because they are. Three of the same. They had a limited menu today, which is fine. So we went for the Supremas. It's a chicken milanesa. Yep. And we could get it with mashed potato, rice, or salad. We all chose mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Well, they're very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice and fresh. Mm -hmm. Quiet place to be having lunch. Yeah. yeah. And uh, very affordable prices here. So, it's perfect. What are we doing after this? We're going after? For, yeah. We're going to drive about 20 minutes outside of town. Mm -hmm. And there's a really cool lookout point. It's Quebrada of... Blah, blah, blah. I forgot the name. <laughs> okay. huh. We'll, let you, we'll let you know when we get there. I'm looking at the map. <laughs> and continuing our drive next up to Quebrada de Escoipe which is about 20 minutes outside of town and first of all I wanted to tell you the price for lunch that was the cheapest lunch we've had I think since we arrived in Argentina it was 808 pesos which came to 13 US dollars for three people three mains one appetizer three drinks and it an was empanada. and oh right, Sam had an empanada. There he is in the back, yeah. filming out the window. Yeah. Um, it was a simple meal, but it was tasty. It was fresh. It was good. I mean, I couldn't even finish my entire main. There were some mashed potatoes left over on the dish, so we're definitely satisfied. And now we're gonna go up into the mountains.
Yeah, today's been awesome. I mean, last night you weren't feeling well, and so we weren't I even know. sure if we were going to do anything catchy. It was going to be way too long of a day trip. And so today we've just pieced together this kind of like uh, patchwork itinerary, and it's been awesome. It's been so much fun going to little towns, driving on these uh, sleepy countryside roads. And there's hardly anyone here. It's been great. The weather's been so nice. It's just been a pleasant day. Yeah, and if we were to continue on this road, like there's a mountain pass that reaches mm -hmm. 4,000 meters. Oh man. Oh my, we've done well, it before. Yeah, we have. So probably not today, we're just gonna take not it today. easy. And tomorrow, we're gonna be doing more driving. Are you pumped for that? Yeah, it's gonna be really cool to go up to Huhui. Um, something to keep in mind, guys, there's a lot of day trips from Salta, but you end up driving three hours there, three hours back plus maybe even more driving. If you actually go and base yourselves up there, like what we're doing, we're going to Tilkara. If you base yourself up there, then you're really close to everything. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're spending four nights there. So super pumped about that. taste of our time in and around Salta. We hope you guys enjoyed exploring this part of the country with us and if so we invite you to hit that subscribe button and join us as we head even further north. Next up is the province of Huhui.